Hello, this is Kendrick Coleman, and welcome to this ninth lesson where we're looking at the vSphere web client, and today we're going to be looking at VM storage profiles. VM storage profiles are what we use to associate attributes to a particular data store and to then be able to create different things. So when we, when we want to start deploying virtual machines, we can choose a particular storage profile and not selecting maybe a particular data store or a particular data store cluster. So if we know we want something that's going to be replicated or we know something that wants to be on SSD or EFD versus fiber channel or SATA, this is where we do it. And this is also something where VAI also comes into effect where it can automatically populate some of the types of storage capabilities that's in your array. It has to be supported by your array and your manufacturer. And what we're looking at right here is a vBlock, but right now the VAI unmap command has actually been done, so we're not going to see anything because uh, it's kind of been a, a recalled feature until it gets fixed. So this is something where we're just going to show yourself of how we would create and where we're going to edit things. So first, if we start at the home screen, you're going to see this other this segment called rules and profiles. So we're going to go here and we'll go to VM storage profiles. And from here you see a few different things. This is where you would create a new VM storage profile. This is where you're going to enable VM storage profiles per compute resource. And let's go ahead and let's do that first because what I want to do is I'm going to make this for a vCloud um, host. So what we want to do is you actually want to make sure that we enable it for it. Um, for vCloud director for 5.1 and above um, you're going to want to use VM storage profiles. This is actually very important. So make sure that you do it. It has to be licensed particularly for it. So let's go ahead and we'll enable it for that cluster. You know what? Since we have it for this, we'll go ahead and enable it for the management cluster as well. It really doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and we'll click OK. Now we'll go up here. We'll can configure a few things. So we'll say that we have, right now I only have two different kinds of data stores. Really it's just one, but I'm just going to say it's two. So we'll say we have, um, this is a, this is a fiber channel, whoop, can't spell, data store. Go ahead and click OK. And we'll add another one. We'll say SATA drives. Here are SATA and slope. So that's good right there. Now you can also do things like maybe it is in RAID 6 or, sorry about that, or maybe it's in, or maybe this is a replicated data store. Really, the options are up to you of, of what you want to configure this as. So here we have some user-defined segments. So let's go ahead and we'll click Close. And what we want to do next is we actually want to assign these attributes to particular data stores. So let's go back here to our home directory and we will go to the vCenter side, we'll go to our data stores, and as you can see, I've got an NFS area here, I've got um, localized data stores, but this is where I want to focus at right here, these ones right here, this is management data stores that sit on the management cluster. So what we want to do is we want to look at a data store like this. So we'll come over here, get out of this getting started tab, and we'll go to the manage side. This is also probably a good time to note about these, about storage I.O. control. This is something that you should probably want to have enabled anyway because what this does is it makes sure that anything that needs access to a particular data store, whether it's a virtual machine that's of higher importance, actually is able to get the I.O. through while other maybe less important VMs aren't, I guess you'd say, getting in the way. So let's go ahead and we'll click OK there. Make sure you do that for every single one. So if I go to FC1, make sure I can edit and then enable storage out control is there. So we'll do that for every single one. But before we do that, now we get to see this thing, this tab called profiles. So we'll go ahead and go here and we want to assign a storage capability. Now the system storage capability will, if, if it's part of VAI, it will actually go ahead and all the attributes will be completely populated for you here already um, from the array, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. But since I'm going to assign it manually and locally, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to say this is Fiber Channel. Go ahead, click OK. It's configured. That's it. So I'm going to do that with the rest of them and I'll be right back. Now that I've gone ahead and I've assigned profiles to all my data stores, let's go back to our home directory and we will go back to the rules and profiles. So we go here and let's go ahead and we'll create a profile. So this says, I want to create something 
where basically I will say this is a high class of service. You know, I don't want to say that, but we'll say it's a high class of service or say this is for speedy VMs because this is going to be everything that has fiber channel capabilities. That's what I want to do. You know, I could also say um, if different v different data stores were assigned with RAID 6 or replicated. Now, kind of think of it, or when you think about it, the assigned capabilities by a user perspective, you can only assign a single capability to it. So you can't say if it's fiber channel and RAID 6 and replicated, then you get this. So keep in mind that Currently, you know, if it's only a user assigned capability, you're only going to be able to assign a single user defined capability to it. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we'll click another one and we'll make this for slow VMs. And this is where we'll have the SATA. So there we go. Now we've got all of our storage profiles completed. So now when we go ahead and we go to back to vCenter and we want to deploy a virtual machine. Actually, what I want to do is I want to go over to my VM templates folder and I want to deploy this to a template or sorry, to a virtual machine. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this getting started window and we will deploy VM from this template. OK, it says I can't. I don't believe it. So we'll go ahead and click this button. <laughs> so now we can. So this is what we're going to call. We'll just call this blah, 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 just to kind of show you exactly what it's called. So we go through here, this is actually where we created our storage profile. So I want to be able to choose the resources and where I want to put it. And this is now where you see the storage profile. So from here, you can say I want a speedy VM or I want a slow VM. So if I choose a speedy VM, then it's going to basically go ahead and figure out what, our, what my compatible data stores are. So right here, you can see that the fiber channel data store cluster that I had created is the only compatible one. If I choose slow VMs, then the only compatible one is this one that says VCDA or VCD SATSTA because I can't spell SATA correctly. So that's how storage profiles really kind of play an effect within vSphere. So it gives you an ability to quickly choose how do you want to deploy a virtual machine based on a specific type of storage profile. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.